The Le Mans Virtual Series is damaging sim racing. It's doing more harm than good for sim racing. Now that's a very controversial opinion, but in this video, I'm gonna let you know why that is. Now the Le Mans Virtual Series, what is it? It's an incredible multi-round sim racing championship going around amazing endurance tracks and culminating in the virtual Le Mans 24 hours. Now this should be the biggest showcase of sim racing to you know people who like most sport but don't understand sim racing to people who are kind of casual sim racing fans to just like you know your friends or your family you can say look this is virtual Le Mans Le Mans is the most famous endurance race in the real world and the Le Mans virtual should be the equivalent of that for sim racing but it's been an absolute farce it's been terrible the last two editions of the Le Mans virtual series at Le Mans have gone so appallingly bad they are really damaging the reputation of sim racing I can't imagine people watching this who are new to sim racing and think yeah I want to have a go at that. And there's multiple reasons why. Now, the most obvious reason is Le Mans Virtual Series has been run on R Factor 2. And R Factor 2 is a, it's a great sim. I love driving R Factor 2. Amazingly detailed feedback. But in terms of an online racing platform, it consistently just seems to fall apart. This year, multiple disconnections, multiple red flags. Last year, you had teams who got disconnected, couldn't even join the server. There was an all female team last year, couldn't even join the server and race. You know, and the races went on without them. Like, really appallingly bad there are glitches as well every sim has glitches but there are glitches with the r-factor 2 max for Sappen, i think twice having like really unrealistic glitches that are causing him to spin and this year just so many red flags really weird moments on the stream and i feel bad for the presenters because they got to scrabble around there should be race and no race now they made a really funny point which is that in real endurance racing you get red flags that's absolutely true and like i remember the, the nurburgring nautch life 24 hours a couple of years ago there was heavy fog really long red flags but sim racing should not be like that it should be more entertaining and accessible and you should be able to turn on your stream and watch it and there should be sim racing going on that's the bare minimum the other thing that i don't think a lot of people talk about is that the Le Mans 24 hours used to be a really big deal in sim racing because it was run on iRacing and anyone could enter. So yes, you would have a top split that would have Max Verstappen in, but you'd have loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of splits and somewhere there'd be a bottom split. And in the bottom split, there'd be brand new teens, people on iRacing for the first time doing their first endurance race. And it's really exciting and it's really accessible. And you think, yeah, we can do that. We can enter the Le Mans 24 hours on iRacing in sim racing and have a go. And that kind of experience, I know as someone who's done an awful lot of 24 hour races in sim racing and in the real world as well, is such an incredible experience. And you don't get that with Le Mans. The way they've done it is they've closed the whole thing off so only the biggest teams with the biggest resources can enter. And that's great for the top split and it should be great for the spectacle. And you have people like Max Verstappen at Roman Grosjean racing, but I've raced Max Verstappen at Roman Grosjean in iRacing. They would do it in iRacing anyway because they love racing. So the fact that it's now a closed box and no one else can enter Le Mans 24 hours, it is exclusive for that one race with that one set of teams that are approved by the organisers. And I think that's a really, really, really sad thing. And I think that's really where Le Mans Virtues is going wrong and where they need to look at. They are not appealing to the grassroots. I don't think there are going to be people watching this thinking, yeah, I want to have a go at sim racing. It seems to be more geared towards people watch it and think, oh, this is sponsored by Rolex. Maybe I should pick up a Rolex. Not sure that's how it works. Or it's sponsored by Goodyear. Goodyear, yeah, okay, maybe I'll get Goodyear tyres. This should be about sim racing first and foremost. This is the biggest opportunity to showcase sim racing. I'm so incredibly passionate about sim racing as a sim racer myself and also as part of this sim racing community that we have on my channel. And Le Mans just lets everyone down really badly. I think they need to relook the whole thing. They need to relook whether it should be on Alpha 2. There's a lot of politics involved there in terms of who owns various companies and it's the same company that does the YouTube stream who actually develops the game who actually owns the rights and they might sometimes pretend to be different but they're all really the same there's a lot of politics there but ultimately this should be for sim racers this should be the start of the year to get people interested in sim racing let me know what you think in the comments by the way don't hold back i want to know your honest thoughts you're incredibly knowledgeable and i want to know what you think about this make sure to subscribe as well by the way if you appreciate me making this video i appreciate you as well but this is a really kind of missed opportunity is damaging sim racing it definitely one needs to be on whatever platform so lots of people can enter and then you can see the top split at the same time as you're racing your teammate tells you oh so and so gross on just overtaken verstappen for leading top split oh that's amazing and you feel like yeah we're in the same one and also people can not everyone wants to watch top split it's a little bit alien sometimes people want to watch like the fifth split or the tenth split or the bottom split you know and it's a bit more fun and people are more human and people make mistakes and 
it's more accessible, it's more relatable. And I really think they're missing out on that. I really, really, really do. It's quite a controversial opinion, but I think there's so much money spent at this. You know, per I, I love per I have a Peugeot. I have a Peugeot car. I love Peugeot. Peugeot's plus all over it. Like, okay, that's great, but I don't just want to see people eating Peugeot-sponsored cereal bars when I want to be watching sim racing, but I can't watch sim racing because the platform's broken. The platform's broken because there's lots of politics that means it's being run on this platform. That's probably not the best platform to run it on. <laughs> so, you know, I kind of, I struggle with this. Let me know what you think. Make sure to subscribe as well if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the comments. I'll see you. See you next time.